I have quite literally just finished filming a video talking about this, the Ferrari F8 Tributo, the current entry level into Ferrari's mid-engine supercar lineup. And with over 700 horsepower, not really a very entry level sounding car anymore. Its replacement, the 296 GTB, moves the bar on even further and packs an 830 horsepower twin turbo V6 hybrid power plant. And of course, many people will ask the question, well, do we really need that much power? The simple answer, of course, no, we don't. But more interestingly, why is it that manufacturers don't really ever build the car that everyone says that they would want? Something a little bit, I suppose like the new Lotus Emira, four to 500 horsepower, high revving, naturally aspirated car with the option of a manual gearbox, smaller dimensions, lower overall abilities, but being fun to drive. There are many reasons why that's never ever going to happen. I'm talking in this video really about Ferrari, but in truth, similar things could apply to Lamborghini and McLaren, and I'm sure to some extent Porsche as well, but I'll explain why they're a special case in just a moment. Firstly, there are a lot of things manufacturers are trying to battle with at the moment. Chief amongst them is emissions. If we ignore for a moment, and it's, it's a big thing to try and ignore, the fact that in many parts of the world, in less than a decade, you simply won't be allowed to sell a car like this. I'm sure you won't have failed to notice the fact that manufacturers are being pressured constantly to deliver cars which are even better in terms of CO2 output, more friendly to the environment, all that sort of stuff. And this is something that even small companies cannot get away from. Now whilst a firm like Ferrari doesn't have the same targets as a big firm say like VW, they do still have targets to meet. In general terms, what smaller companies have to do is keep improving things. So every now and again they have to go, look, we're doing better. Look, we used to have all V8s. Now we have a hybrid V6. And unfortunately, as much as we might like them, small, high revving, naturally aspirated power plants just aren't very good for CO2 reasons. So that's one very major issue that's kind of hard to get around now. It's still pretty upsetting though when you realise that things like this are demonised despite the fact that they are hardly driven and this Mazda pickup truck in front smells not very MOT friendly I have to say. So that's one issue. The next is the fact that actually in terms of development cost you'd be surprised to learn that actually it's just about the same to develop a slow car as it is a fast one. If you're going to develop a new engine, it's an expensive business to get into. It's, there's no way around it. Companies like Ford have to share the cost of it with others just to make it worth their while. And when Ford have to do that, that should tell you just how pricey it is. McLaren didn't use essentially one engine for the first 10 years of their cars because they were lazy. They did that because that's really the time it takes to amortize all of your R&D costs. It's a very, very necessary thing to do. When you're selling cars at the volumes they are, you just can't really afford to have that many cars and engines on offer. As it is, the fact that Ferrari now have a V12, a V8, and a V6 in the lineup is pretty remarkable for a, a very small firm. And it's easy to forget that they aren't a big company. They sell about a third as many cars in a year as Porsche sell 911s. Also, a company which are very proud of their engineering and of course very keen at every possible opportunity to wheel out that link between Formula One and their road cars. And Formula One isn't really in the business of going slower but having fun. It's in the business of going fast and winning. So for Ferrari to say, hey, we've just built a new car and it's much slower than the old one would be a little bit against the brand's image. Also, if you're going to then produce a car which is quite a bit slower than your others, you have to price it lower. This means that you're going to probably have to sell more of them to actually make up your profits. If you remember that bit we talked about a moment ago where I told you that it costs the same to develop a fast car as it does a slow car. And Ferrari, being the business that they are, and, and rightly so, would rather sell fewer, more expensive cars than more cheaper ones, because that's what makes you want a Ferrari, the fact that not everybody has one, the fact that it takes a lot of hard work to get one, or, you know, having 
rich Uncle Norbert die, or something like that. There is something just phenomenally, incredibly special about staring down and seeing that prancing horse on the modern ease yellow background. <laughs> if ever I'm driving one of mine, I look down and it's it's a real special feeling. For, for a petrol head and for someone that's lusted for so long after their own Ferrari, it's, it's a real moment to actually take delivery of that. And I think if it was something that just anybody could do on any given day, that, that would take something from it. I think everyone should be allowed to drive a Ferrari, absolutely. But own one? I'm gonna sound like a dick, aren't I? But you know what I'm getting at, okay? But here, for me, is the most interesting bit of all. If Ferrari did actually go and make that car, we've remade the 355, it's got 500 horsepower, revs to 9,500 RPM, it's got a manual gearbox and it's only 175 grand. Would you actually buy it? I know you're all saying, yes, yes, of course I would. But would you really? The people whinged and whined for a long time about Porsche essentially binning off the manual gearbox in the GT3. But when they put it back in, about three quarters of their buyers stuck with the PDK. And I suspect a good portion of the 25% remaining only spec the manual, probably with the touring option, because they thought it was going to be best for residuals. It was the purest spec. It was essentially the investment spec. They weren't really buying it because that's what they wanted. Curious, isn't it? In fact, if you ask Porsche in general, they would tell you that less than 15% of all of their sales are manual gearboxes. And that's the cars, by the way, where they actually offer a manual gearbox as well. That's not including Panameras and everything. It costs a huge amount of money for them to develop a manual gearbox, especially knowing so few people are actually going to buy it. That's why it's now a no-cost option, rather than the PDK being the one you spend lots more money to get. People do love their paddles, people love the experience of that, they love the ease of driving a car like this really, really fast. And of course, if you took all the driver aids away and said, yeah, this is a real cool old school raw sports car, yeah, you'll get a whole bunch of people going, yeah, this is brilliant, it's fantastic, it reminds me of the days when men were men and women weren't allowed to vote. But actually what you'll find is that loads of people start crashing their cars. And that's not a good look, because people have become rather dependent on many of these driver aids. I mean, I love the fact that this car has lots of driver aids. It means I can take liberties with it I would never dream of in a 355. And if Ferrari went to all this trouble of reinventing a 355 or a 360 or something like that, and they actually did build it, would you not then just go and buy a 355 instead? Because then it'll sound like you wanted it to. Then it'll look like you wanted it to. It'll feel like you wanted it to. And it'll probably be cheaper. You might think this whole new thing is a great, wonderful idea, and you go to the showroom and you'll be like, oh, I could have the cool, purest thing. Or I could go and get an F12 for the same money, which has loads more power and more technology and a shouty V12 because I think that's what most people would actually do. So for those reasons, amongst others, I think it's a lovely idea of Ferrari going and building, let's call it, another Dino, but I just don't think it could ever happen. That's not to say that they don't want to, maybe they'll build a, a Ferrari Victor equivalent or something like that. But from a business perspective, I am afraid your dream just doesn't make any sense. Shame that, because it's my dream too. But there we go. This is still not a bad old thing to tool around in. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed today's little video. Please like, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you for the next one. Bye-bye.